So let's stop talking negatively about the uh, the two operation two uh, uh, approaches um, because they are extremely powerful even when they are on their own. Um, but let's talk about how when combining the two um, we can even enhance their benefits even further. So you might have seen in in those couple of slides there where um, we were we were sort of talking about items that. Um, Necess necessarily didn't um, match in both cases. Their downfalls um, are actually picked up in the um, in the opposing system or the um, um, contrasting system here. Uh, so that if we have a, a controlling um, tool with a uh, sorry a, a scheduling tool um, from the location-based management side and a controlling process, um, we can see how the two can fit very well together. The uh, scheduling tool does have a controlling mechanism, um, and the controlling process from the last planner side does have um, scheduling theory behind it. Um, but it's the social process from the last planner um, system that is, enables us to make better use of the structured nature to be able to record those um, social commitments, um, structure the data better, and analyze that information. So being able to collect and then structure and, and um, contain it within uh, one repository, one, one system for all of that social data that's collected. Then we look at uh, locations. So locations being clearly defined in the location-based management system. Um, and these clearly defined locations improve the activity specifications. So the assignments um, are a lot more, um, it's, a, it's an efficient discussion when we are showing where those people are working, where the, how they're working through those locations. And again, we're talking about using those locations for, for planning continuous assignments. We see that uh, the, the data collection method, so we, we talk, talk there about um, production data being collected early. And essentially what we're trying to do is use a calculator to more scientifically um, crunch that that information and get more accurate starting data. So the um, the, the calculator consumes the um, the more accurate data that we're getting. The, the last planner system we're trying to optimize the global target. So instead of having a, a master schedule um, just mainly planned by very very um, high level assumptions we're able to get a lot more detail from this data collection process, a lot more um, early in, in the process to remove the starts and stops to, um, to optimize the plan. Um, and essentially, these global targets will be more, more accurate and more likely to be able to facilitate um, the daily commitments, which are, again, um, going to stray um, not, not very far away. So the, the um, the firefighting on site that we generally see, and even when we're having these daily commitments, uh, what we're trying to do is have a more harmonious and a plan that's likely to be um, able to be put in place as planned, um, and therefore the daily daily commitments, um, these uh, more granular day-to-day -day assignments, are able then to be carried out um, in order to achieve this this plan. So. Um, We've got the global side from the location-based management system and then going right away to the very granular daily um, commitments on assignment level. From the location-based management system, we have a system that collects the data and analyzes um, actual production data, has the forecasting mechanism in, and essentially these forecasts are allowing us to have a, a more reliable promising so, uh, process. So, we are able to make use of this past performance, and we're able to learn from our mistakes. And essentially, this connection allows us to have more reliable promising. From the um, location-based side, uh, these forecasts will then initiate the warnings to show us where the problems are, might might occur. Um, they'll also show us you know, where the the root causes um, could be. So. Uh, clashing tech trades where people started at the same time or um, didn't didn't possibly follow the plan. 
um, or, or, or are essentially deviating from the plan. The um, last planner system provides us a forum to uh, dis discuss those problems and to um, really uh, mitigate them early. So instead of there the being a lot of data in the system and um, people aren't necessarily able to review and refine it, um, we are offering ourselves a system to collect, analyze, and flag the information, and then also really discuss that and iron out the creases. So there's a huge number of um, complementing factors, and there are more than I've just shown on, on the screen, but essentially we are um, really, really pleased to see so many um, areas where sometimes we've um, seen lower than optimal um, performance from one system um, being supported by the by the other. So um, really very um, encouraging first signs on um, combining these two processes. But it's not without its difficulties as we mentioned and the main um, planning process in, in tradition has been that we have these two steps where we will plan and we will record um, what has happened, what has occurred against the plan. And we're able now um, to say that instead of just carrying out these two steps, what we can do is have a bit of change in the process, um, depending on how um, hungry you are to show um, optimum results. We would suggest that um, why, why put off change? Uh, why not change uh, today? Why not um, implement the full process in order to get the full um, benefit of the results? So in the low side, uh, we can put together better plans. We can use sticky note sessions to, to get more information into those plans. Um, and we can then follow exactly the same um, as the traditional process. We can get those plans together and we can have a, a system in which we have people record their commitments to production. And um, it's not just a recording of the actual um, it's a recording of the plan and the commitment to the plan in order to then um, use it uh, for analysis and um, comparing production against the plan production against the targets. Or if we really went and um, it's not difficult, um, but it's, it is a, a, a large change, we're seeing that in order to make sure that those commitments are achieved, we need a system of uh, pull controlling that combines commitments and dictation um, to in, in order to ensure that people are starting in the right place at the right time with the right amount of resource and the material materials ready and the area is clear um, and all of these prerequisites and the um, constraints have been removed. So we need this process in order to put work in place. And we also need, at the end, after the analysis, a method of controlling and a method of being able to track the progress, so metrics like plan percent complete, um, the forecasting mechanism within the location-based management system to be able to manipulate the planned resources for the rest of certain tasks and change things in order to implement control actions and then the last step there is the learning process, um, the causes of deviation, the, the reasons for, for failing on certain tasks, and um, not just understanding what the, um, why something didn't happen at that point, but really going through the root cause analysis and taking that back into the planning stages um, and essentially in the preparation so that we are eliminating um, those as being potential factors that are going to cause us problems at later stages. So it is um, a lot of change, but um, it's a very structured process and something that, um, uh, as Holly said, you know, we um, um, can help you with, and, and that's part of this presentation to go through some of that workshop-based sessions in order to show you that uh, process. So how do we tie it together? What does it look like when we put the um, last planner stages and combine that with the location-based management system? We start with uh, the client's milestone. So um, we have some high level. These are the 
uh, deadlines in order to achieve certain things. They could be sectional completion. They could be items that we need to um, complete uh, for um, our own internal goals. But uh, that milestone schedule is literally that, just milestones, nothing more. Then we look at the master schedule and we hope that this master schedule now is going to be driven by our knowledge base and it's going to be um, production based so that we can spot the bottleneck trades and we can eliminate the areas of concern. We can um, staff certain uh, uh, subcontractors in, in ways that mean that we can achieve the plan and um, we can isolate areas that are going to be risky uh, before we get into uh, more detailed planning. But this is actually a more detailed planning step before um, before we get the um, resources that are going to commit to their actual production. So we are hopefully using a knowledge base that has been refined from um, previous projects and the production information uh, contained in there is sound and um, is is at least a very good starting point or a better starting point than very high level assumptions. We then look at phase scheduling and each one of these um, master schedule uh, tasks on here can be broken down into a phase schedule where we are creating and refining. Um, certainly in the, uh, we're mentioning here 30 days before each phase, that's really the refinement occurs 30 days before the phase um, and this is where we're looking at the look ahead meeting which is the next step um, but essentially we can create these as soon as these people are on board so what we're looking in the phase scheduling um, sessions is to try and get uh, the um, hopefully um, the guys that are going to carry out the work to commit to the production rates that we've defined in the master schedule phase we then look, and this is where um, most of the change is through the look ahead planning and implementing location based management, we have a very clear and very simple way of updating progress. So in the control chart, as you saw, we just tick the boxes to show which areas of which tasks we have completed. Then we are reviewing, and this is, um, this is happening on a daily basis, um, and it's so easy to happen on a, to occur on a daily basis because it's just ticking to say when things have started and when things have finished in each each location. Then we have the unadjusted forecast. So you can see here areas where, based on our uh, completions, we are showing deviation from our original target and an extension to the overall um, period in this look ahead plan. And also we can see areas where they are uh, forecasting warnings to show disruption in tasks that require certain control actions to be um, implemented in order to adjust the forecast. So going through this, um, the look ahead process, we are trying to use the forecast plus the control actions to adjust and to um, show where we hope to maintain and achieve um, production without any conflicts in the forecast. That forecast, that adjusted forecast, is then used to create the weekly work plans. And the weekly work plans are showing the task from the week that you're defining and the assignments, the um, very much more granular activities that are required in order to complete that task. And each one of these, each one of these items within the list um, might be something like um, uh, clear area or check RFI answer or um, 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 collect materials or um, uh, prefab a cage or something along those lines. All of these items are a lot more detailed than we would have in the phase schedule and the look ahead adjustments. 